like an optimization question. So what we have in this question is a rectangular box. Okay, I'm going to try to draw us a nice rectangular box quickly. Um, let's try to be clever about this. You guys can read the rest of the question so long. For those of you that do EGD, don't be laughing at me right now. I can hear you. <laughs> Not really, I can't hear you. Drawing doesn't come to all of us naturally. Mm -mm. Okay, the masterpiece. Okay, so here we have the dimensions. Okay, we have a closed rectangular box and technically those should be dotted lines. Just looks a bit weird. Okay, so we have a closed rectangular box. The dimensions are length, width, and height. Doesn't really matter where you put that, but I'm just going to go length, width, and then and then um, height over there. Okay, so they said that the the length of the base is three times the width. The length of the base is three times the width. Okay, we'll come back to the. We can fill it in now. The length must be three times the width. So we can say L is equal to three W. Length is three times the width. Okay, so I can even fill it in here just so we don't forget. And then the volume must be equal to five. Okay, so we'll remember that for just now. Um, but let's fill it in now. Um, doesn't really matter. We can do it in many different ways. We know that volume is equal to length, height, times um, width. Okay, well, let me use a small h just to not confuse anyone. And they told us that that must be equal to five. So I'm going to say five equals to the length. Now, I know that the length is 3w. Remember, we said that the length is 3w, so I'll just fill that in so long. We don't know what the height is, and we don't know what w is. I'm just going to simplify that a little bit. 3hw squared. Right, guys, I'm going to carry on. So we'll leave, we'll, we'll park this equation for now. We'll, we'll probably have to come back to that a little bit later. Um, it's just, it's doing a bit of a different color here. We'll probably have to come use this one again later, but let's leave it for now, okay? So now we're gonna move on to the next part of the question, which says that the material for the top and the bottom is 15 Rand per square meter. So the top and the bottom is 15 Rand per square meter, okay? So top, oops, and the bottom, Okay, no, that's not going to work. Let's just remember top and bottom is 15 Rand per square meter. And then the material for the side is only six Rand per square meter. Okay, so the sides will be six Rand per square meter. They're saying here show that the cost to construct the box can be given as this. So what I want you to realize is that they're talking about per square meter. So that is not volume, that is surface area. So if we want to work out the cost, we would have to go find a formula for the surface area of this box. Now, I never use fancy formulas with surface area. Um, I just look at the shape and I ask myself, what shapes can I see here? I don't think I'm not one of those students that have like um, in like grade nine and 10, I've, I've had some students from like grade nine and 10, they, rem they memorize every single formula, like LB times two plus two LH. It's like, no, just look at the shape. If you just look at the shape, um, what we can see here is that there is a front, which would be W times H because it's a rectangle. And there are two of those. There are two of those. So I'm just going to say that my surface area is equal to two because there's two of them. W times h. Then I'm going to say plus. Now I'm going to go look for some other shapes. Well, I can see that there is a shape at the top and there's a shape at the bottom. So if you look at the top, it would be, um, let me use blue. It would be 3w times w. Can you see that? 3w times w because it's the length, which they've said is 3w, and then the width. So there's two of those. So I'm going to say plus two um, of these ones. That's going to be 3w times w. And then I must remember that there is also um, the sides. So that would be, let's do that in green. That would be these sides over here. And there's also going to be two of those. 
over there and over there. Sorry, I forgot one of the blue ones at the bottom. Okay, so there's two green sides. So we can go fill that in quickly. And that the sides would be H times three W. And of course there's two of them. So that would be two times H times three W. Then I'm just gonna neaten everything up a little bit. So that's gonna give me two WH plus um, six W squared plus six WH. I'm then gonna put these two together because they are like terms. So we can say that the surface area is eight WH plus six W squared. Fantastic, life's looking good right now, but we need to know what the cost will be. Ooh, but I've just realized we haven't taken into the, the cost into account. Okay, give me a second. I think, oh no, 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 no. I just went bouldering in there with my eraser. <laughs> Forgot that there's a shape under this whole thing. Okay, so they said that the um, the top and the bottom. So what was that? That was the W. W times three W. Oh, that was the six W squared part. Okay, so we good. So this was the top and the bottom. Now they told. Okay, so now if you want to get the cost, if you want to work out the cost. You're going to have to multiply the area for the sides, which is the 8WH. That's the sides. You are going to have to multiply that. What did they say the sides are? The sides are 6 rand per square meter. So I'm going to say 8WH times 6 for that plus 6W squared times 15. Okay, and so if we now have to go work out the total cost, we would end up with 48 WH, six times 15 is 90 W squared, and that is the cost. And that is exactly what they asked us to get over there. Determine the width of the box such that the cost is a minimum, such that the cost is a minimum. Okay, not a problem at all. We knew they were going to say minimum and maximum eventually because that's the way optimization works. Right. So we would like to take the cost and we want to make it a minimum. I don't care if it says minimum or maximum. Why? Because if I have a graph and I want to find the maximum, it's this point. If I want to find the minimum, it's this point. How do you find turning? How do you find minimums and maximums? It's when the first derivative is equal to zero. So we need to take the first derivative of this. However, we can't. How come? You cannot take the first derivative when there is more than one variable. Can you see we have a w, but we also have an h. You cannot do that. That is like me saying y equals to xz squared plus 3z. And then I say take the first derivative. You can't do it because there's more than one variable. So we need to we need to replace one of the variables. Ah, and remember earlier when we said that the volume was equal to five? They didn't tell us that for nothing. We said that five is equal to the length, which was three W, and the width, which was W, and the height. And so what we found was that was three W squared times height. Okay, because this part here was the length. So what we do now, is we get H alone. So we get H alone, and that's gonna be five over three W squared, okay? Then what you do is you take that H and you put it in the place of that H over there. Pretty cool, hey? And I promise you guys, all optimization questions work like this. So what we can say is that the cost, I'm just going to call it C for cost, is going to be equal to 48 W and then H is 5 over 3 W squared plus 90 W squared. And so if we go simplify this, 48 times 5, it's 240. Oh, but then there's also a divide by 3. Um, so that's 80. But let me just double check. Okay, so if you put all those numbers together, you're going to get 80 W over W squared plus 90 W squared. Now, 
I'm going to simplify this. Can you see that these W's are going to cancel each other and there'll be one W left over at the bottom? And so that's going to become 80 over W plus 90 W squared. So now we need to take the first derivative of this thing over here. So I'm going to quickly make a bit of space for myself. So we need to take the first derivative. So let me just write this down once again. Now, if you know how to take first derivatives, you would remember that you don't want this number, this letter here at the bottom. So our next step before we take the derivative is actually just to bring it to the top like that. Okay, now we can take the first derivative, but now you've got to do it clever. You can't say C with a little line there. Um, remember that there are different ways of showing the derivative. Um, so because this C is a letter by itself, the way you've got to do it is you've got to say the derivative of C with respect to W. So you've got to do it like that. Terrible, hey? DC over DW. And then you take the first derivative. So that's going to be minus 80 W to the minus 2, because I always minus 1 from that exponent, plus 180 W. Then we know that when you want the minimum or the maximum, you must make the first derivative 0. So what I would do next is I would put the W minus 2 back at the bottom again. I would then get a common denominator, which is W squared. And so that means I'm going to end up with minus 80 plus 180 W cubed, right? All I did was I got a common denominator. I'm then going to take the W um the the 80 over actually let's take the 80 over then gonna divide by 180 and that gives me four over nine i'm not gonna round off yet because it's not my final answer then i'm gonna take the cube root of four over nine. Oh, oh no Wrong button, Kevin. And you should get a final answer of 0, 0,76 meters. I know that it's in meters because they said square meter and they said meter cube over there.